It is with great pleasure. I welcome this afternoon to the program uh, gun analyst, top selling author of the book Safety On An Introduction to the World of Firearms for Children, Yehuda Reamer. Mr. Reamer, thanks for calling us this afternoon. Thank you for having me. I appreciate your time. Hey, you know, there seems to be no end in sight in this gun control debate, and it's been going on for, for decades. But there are some really, really crazy, uh, ridiculous almost gun control laws and gun laws that, that even it, it, some of the proudest NRA members would scratch their head at. Um, give me some of those crazy gun laws. What are some of the craziest gun rules today? I mean, there, there's a lot out there. Um, you know, I think one of them would be a lot of states have limits on magazines. All right. I, I think that's ridiculous. I don't think a person should be restricted in terms of how many rounds they can carry. Um, I know I grew up in Los Angeles, and when I bought my first guns, uh, it was only I was only allowed to have 10 rounds. And, you know, a lot of times having an AR-15 that you can only shoot 10 rounds in, only people that those type of laws hurt are uh, law-abiding gun owners. Yeah, and it's been that way for forever. I mean, all these, that's all they do. They hurt the, the law-abiding gun owners. I mean, uh, you got a, a rabid pro-gun lobby and, and that, that's out there, and rightly so. Uh, the Deep South comes to mind. Our area out here in Oklahoma and the Texas area, you've got the Rocky Mountains and r- rural states uh, as opposed to urban areas. Uh, do you see that, that there's gun laws are more severe in those rural or the uh, urban areas as opposed to uh, the the sections of the country that uh, you know are are more uh, pro gun, if you will? I mean, yes and no. I mean, you know, I live in Dallas, and um, you know, it's a relatively big state. Uh, I'm sorry, a big city, and at the same time, you know, the gun laws in Texas are great. But then you go to places like Los Angeles, right? Um, and I actually just spent the last month in Chicago, and, you know, it, it's ridiculous. It, you, obviously, they, they are so much more strict there than a place like Texas. So it, it really depends, but, you know, you, you do have a lot of um, big cities that are just rapidly anti-gun. And, and it, but is it concentrated, do you think, more to the big cities and the ur- the rural areas, rural states, if you will, or the, the middle section of the country, as they call sometimes the flyover states? Right. Um, I, th- I think so. I think, you know, a, a lot of the, the, I guess, yeah, the big cities tend to have a lot more stricter gun laws than the rural areas. The rural areas understand that, you know, not, not only do they believe in the Second Amendment for what the original purpose was but they believe in it because you know a lot of these people are out hunting and that's how they provide food for their family right right so you know they definitely believe in less gun laws than more and then more gun control and if you if you've ever gone to uh, to try and purchase a gun anywhere for that matter i mean it's not as easy as some people think i mean you, you go out there there's paperwork to go through there's background checks i mean i, I just purchased two myself recently and the paperwork was amazing like I, I didn't remember that the first time i did that uh how does how does go ahead no no i'll tell you i, I agree with you on that how does some of these some of these these per, these rules and the these concealed carry laws how do, does it help or hurt the gun debate? You mean like people who carry concealed? No, I mean the, the rules and the laws that sometimes make it more severe, uh, and, and and just concealed carry laws in general in some of the states. Or does it help the debate on gun control or guns, uh, or does it hurt it? I mean, I, I, you know, people who carry conce- I, I, I might not understand your question exactly. Uh, what well, are you asking? Do people who carry concealed hurt the gun debate? No, I'm asking: is is all the 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 gun control laws, the rules that are in 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 effect in certain states and in certain urban areas, does it help or hurt the debate on gun control? Oh, I mean, I think it hurts the debate on gun control. The the, the st- the stricter laws you have, uh, the less ability people have the right to defend themselves. And, you know, you have all these organizations like the Brady campaign and you have Moms Demand Action. They're all promoting more gun control. But if you look at the cities that have the biggest or most stringent gun control, 
those are the cities that have the most violent crime. Yeah, right. Like you mentioned Chicago, and we all know the story uh, of, of a crime in Chicago. Pleased to be joined by Yehuda Reamer. He is a gun analyst, top-selling author of the book Safety On, an introduction to the world of firearms for kids. And that's that was very interesting to me because I don't know that I have ever seen a gun, a, a book on on uh, treating guns with respect uh, like yours, Safety On. Uh, it, it, and so kudos to you for, for opening the dialogue that, that maybe some parents and responsible people, but just to have no idea how to open that dialogue, the dialogue with their children on keeping their safety on how to, how to respect firearms. So kudos to you for that, for the, for the book. Um, when do you know it's the right time to teach your kid about gun safety? Um, you know, in terms of teaching them gun safety, I think as you, as soon as they're able to understand the concept, I mean, you know, we, we do teach kids very young, you know, don't touch knives, don't touch fire, you know, so it, it's the same idea. But in terms of actually taking them to shoot, that's a, that's a case-by-case basis where, you know, really depends on the maturity of the child and if the parent thinks that the child is ready. What, what are the first steps to uh, maybe understanding the proper way uh, for parents maybe to relay to their kids uh, uh, how to own a firearm, understanding the proper way to own that gun? Personally, don't think that a parent should hide it. it you know, if if you are a concealed carry holder, or, I mean, I don't know why I say concealed carry, or if you have the, a license to carry and whether you're carrying openly or concealed, hiding it from your child will only make them much more curious and want to, you know, touch it. If you are openly caring and they see it and you discuss it with them, then you take away that cool factor and you explain to the child that guns are no more than tools. You know, you, you'll save lives that way. Hey, we're talking with Yehuda Reamer. He's the author of the uh, book Safety on an Introduction to the World of Firearms for Kids and Gun Analyst. Uh, it, it's important to teach kids the respect for all firearms, not just folks that conceal carry, correct? Yes. And, and that's a big thing when you introduce or, you know, a child is introduced into firearms. Do you think the society uh, is still pr- ignorant, if you will, when it comes to, to firearms? Are we, I mean, as a whole, is society ignorant when it comes to guns? Um, I think a, a big majority, no, not when it's a majority, I would say a lot of people are. Um, I think people don't, are still afraid of it. And, you know, when you're afraid of the unknown, You don't want to have to deal with it. And I think there are a lot of people out there who might benefit from firearms and firearm education, but they're they're ignorant. They just don't understand uh, that, like I just said, a gun is a tool, nothing more. And if used properly, everyone will be safe. If used improperly... People could get hurt, and you know, unfortunately, worse. Right? Yeah, it's 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 definitely something that you want to instill that deep respect for. I can remember that with uh, with my dad. Uh, you know, we had the gun case in the garage, and, and you didn't touch it, and, and and God forbid if you even went near it and tried to open that thing. But the, I mean, it was a, it, you know there was a fear factor in that regard. But he also trained us and showed us and took us out and and fired those weapons, which again adds to the knowledge aspect of it. Um, so. It's obvious more knowledge will help prevent uh, future events. Uh, how do we get that across to people? Is it just the big the ad campaigns and books like yourself, uh, Safety On? Uh, those are, those are, are starts. Is there a way we could better that for our country so that you know we can take away some of the hysteria behind guns and, and concealed carry and the such? I mean, as, as long as you have uh, organizations like Every Town for, uh, you know, uh, gun safety or uh, I don't even know the names of them anymore, but, you know, Moms for Gun Safety and Shannon Watson, Bloomberg and the Brady campaign. Right. As long as you have all of these organizations, you know, yelling at the top of their lungs that guns are bad, guns are dangerous, we need to ban guns and get rid of them, you know, they, they have the media's pocket. And, and anything that they say, the media will mimic and they will – all the talking points will get out there. And it's very difficult to argue with that and to make head- headwind to combat that. But you do have some really good organizations out there that have been doing great work, like the NRA's Eddie Eagle program, Project Child Safe from the NSSF. You know, there are great organizations that are combating day and night. Um, it's just it's not easy to combat it when you have people like Michael Bloomberg, who has a nearly infinite war chest, 
and willing to use it to shoot down gun owners. Do you think knowledge as a whole, we're speaking with Yehuda Reamer, is the author of the book Safety On, an introduction to the world of firearms for children. More knowledge, do you think it'll help prevent future events from happening? Yeah, 100%. I, I definitely do. Um, I think it was Breitbart that came out a couple years ago with a, a small clip, or maybe it was ABC News, and I just saw it on Breitbart. I apologize, I don't remember. Mm-hmm. But um, they had a bunch of kids in the room, and I think there were six kids, and in the room there was a, a bunch of uh, junk that the kids can play with, and they actually – put a real gun in the in this pile of stuff Mm -hmm. obviously it was unloaded and people were watching right but for a bunch of the kids picked up the firearm and started pointing it at each other and thought it was funny and cool two of the kids if i remember did not go near the firearm didn't touch it and it came out that those two kids were the only kids that grew up in a house that discussed firearms and the kids knew about gun safety so education is pa- education is power. Right, it sure is, and and that's uh, proof that responsible moms and dads of this country who exercise their Second Amendment rights and and instill that deep respect uh, for firearms, it really does carry a long way. Uh, talking with Yehuda Raymer, uh, he's the author of the book Safety on an Introduction to the World of Firearms for Children. Uh, there was a new uh, report that came out. Uh, from our folks at the Crime Prevention Research Center. We've had Dr. John Lott on a bunch of times. And it states that women and minorities are are a growing number of concealed handgun permits. Why do you think that is? Um, I think, you know, that's a great question. Um, I think women finally realized, I mean, it's been going on for years, so I don't want to, you know, I'm, I'm not knocking anybody, but, you know, it, it's, now come that people, everybody, you know, want to defend themselves. And a lot of times people, you know, a, a woman who in the past would have her husband around to defend them in, at all times, you know, he, women realize, like, hey, we don't need that. We can defend ourselves at any given time, and why not? Why should we not have that ability? And I think that's one of the main reasons, and the same thing with minorities. is You know, it just a lot of times you have people just, are sick and tired of having to worry about if they're going to survive the day. Yeah. And as long as you're a law-abiding gun owner and you, pra- you, know, you practice gun safety, then by all means, carry and defend yourself and your family. Yeah, it show- this study showed that it was up almost 2 million since, since last July, and it was far outpacing uh, concealed carry permits uh, that were being requested by white males or any males on that matter. I mean, do you think that uh, the anti-gun agenda – of Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton drove this demand? Oh, 100%. I mean, there's a there's a reason why a lot of people in the gun industry joke that Obama was the number one gun salesman of all time. Right, right. You no, know, when, <laughs> when when you when you have when you have people, when you have a person who is threatening to take away your ability to defend your very way of life, your your freedoms and your family, then you know you're you're asking for a fight, and people, Americans across the country, understood that, and they went to gun stores and they bought up all the guns they can get because they were afraid that if Hillary Clinton would win the presidency, I mean, you know, who knows what could have happened? Yeah. and they wanted to be prepared. I shudder at the thought of what would have happened if she would have gotten in there. Uh, and you know what? Maybe Barack Obama was in the back pocket of the gun lobbyists. <laughs> Who knows? I, I, w- I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> so help him sell some more guns. Yehuda Raymer, enjoy your weekend, sir. I appreciate your time. Make sure to check out his book, Safety On, an introduction to the world of firearms for kids. Uh, he's also got a uh, website you can uh, explore, and that's Yehuda Raymer. That's R-E-M-E-R. Yehuda spelled Y-E-H-U-D-A dot com. Yehudaraymer.com. Mr. Raymer, thanks. I uh, appreciate the info. It was good talking to you. I hope to have you on back again soon. Sounds good. Thank you very much. It's the Matt Garrett Show.